What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Back Pick Podcast. I'm your host, Brett Thomas. Uh, today's guest, a super special guest, gold and platinum award winner from 2022, Jose Trevino joins the show, and he talks about everything catching. We dug into so many different aspects, receiving, transfers, blocking, you name it. We talked about it all. This is a massive, massive show for all of you. I hope you get as much out of this as you can. Hope you enjoy. The Backpick Podcast and the Catching Academy are happy to be partnered with All Star Sports, who we think does the best job of taking care of catchers. You can go to their website and use our code Catching Academy 10 and get 10% off anything site wide. So I want to first question I want to ask you is something that you're you're currently kind of dealing with, and I think a lot of younger athletes deal with, um, is the injury. And I think, you know, it's something that that our younger athletes have a really difficult time dealing with, uh, kind of the mental side of that and and losing the game for a little bit. Talk a little bit about the experience this year. And, and I mean, obviously coming off an incredible year you had in 2022 to then have the next year shortened. Um, how you dealt with that? Yeah. You know, um, obviously it's tough, man. It's uh, something I love to do. I love to play the game of baseball. I love to play. Um, I love to just be around the game and for that to be kind of taken away from me. It was, it was, it's, it's been rough. Um, you know, I'm, I was chomping at the bit in November when everybody else was like, you know, we're trying to get ready for the off season. I was ready to go play, you know, but, um, yeah, it, it's been tough. It's been a long, long process. You know, I'm not, I'm not a patient person like at all. Like I, if I want something, I go and get it and that's just how it is. But, um, I've had to be real, real patient, real, real patient and, now starting to see that we're about a month away um you know i'm getting even more excited i'm 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 making sure everything's tidied up and and ready to go but the injury itself was tough man it was a, it was a tough rehab it was um it was lonely to be honest like it was like there was i, I didn't have that you know i had my family my family's been been a blessing uh, for me through this whole thing you know my wife my two kids but it's been lonely man like I wasn't able to be in the clubhouse, you know, that much as I wanted to. I wasn't around everybody, you know. I was getting my ass kicked in rehab, but it just uh, – it, it was it was lonely, man. I had a lot to think about. Uh, you know, the questions start popping up. Like, what if? What if you're not the same? What if this? What if that? And it just comes with all with, – with good timing and, and, you know, it it shows that, you know, the little things do matter in, in, in little details. So it's been, it's been a ride, man. Well, you're got a little light at the end of tunnel here and, and looks like Mm -hmm. things are looking up for you. So it's exciting. I want to go back to a little bit of your beginnings. I'm, I was looking at, uh, your time at, uh, Oral Roberts (laughs) and I can't, so help me figure this out. Cause you were a, you were a catcher your first year, Mm -hmm. an infielder the second year and a catcher again. The yeah. third year? Is that what it was? No. So I came in as an infielder, uh, played third base. Um, that was my had freshman you caught, year. Had you caught previously before that, like in high school and anything you caught? I caught I, yeah, I caught in high school, but it was like I just was back there. Like yeah. I wasn't – I wasn't – I didn't train by any means to be a catcher. Like I didn't mm-hmm. work at it or nothing. But in high school – um scouts wanted to see me catch they wanted to see um hey like what can he do behind the plate like you know he's got all these qualities and it all matches up to be a catcher so I did it in high school like two or three games just to kind of like do it um one day I did it in in like summer bar or something uh we were at Oklahoma State and Or Roberts was actually there and I think I hit a homer and I think I threw like three guys out so I would just do it just because, like, scouts wanted to see what they had. Like, you know, people recruiting me or, or like, the scouts. I don't know. Pro scouts. So I, that's how I did it. But freshman year, I went in as an infielder. Uh, sophomore year, we had our our catcher had got drafted uh, from Oral Roberts. His name was Bennett Picard, and he was the one that caught Alex Gonzalez. So Alex Gonzalez was taken the year before me with the Rangers in the first round. And I think that's kind of how the Rangers kind of saw me was because I would go and catch Chi-Chi on Fridays. 
And then I would go back and play, you know, third base or wherever they needed me, shortstop. Uh, and then my junior year rolled around and I played third and I would catch some. And then towards like, I want to say like maybe like eight to 10 games in, they were just like, Hey man, we need a, we need an infielder, uh, shortstop. Like you mind going to the infield and, you know, picking it for us. And I was like, yeah, whatever. So love it. Just whatever they needed, man. For sure. I'm like, as the catching position has evolved, you know, over the last 10 years, it's been like, you know, a huge uh, evolving of the position. To me, it's gotten to to being able to explain to guys uh, more the idea of comparing to infielders and the movements that infielders mm-hmm. make. I actually at CatcherCon this year did a whole presentation on the parallels between infield play and catchers. Yeah. How much did that background help you, you know, really make the transition when you got into professional baseball? Oh, man, a ton. A ton. Uh, I think just because of the athleticism of it, like just by being an athlete back there, like whether it's an exchange like a double play or whether it's like a ground ball that you're going to field, a backhand, like that kind of stuff helps a lot. Uh, I think just being an athlete helps, you know, back there. For sure. Using the hands and mm-hmm. and uh, getting your body moving and, and being more athletic. I love it. So – when you had come into pro ball, uh, obviously the the one knee stand starts coming into play, and I'm mm-hmm. I'm curious about your thoughts on it because you do it a little bit differently at times. Um, number one, my question is: Are obviously you're naturally uh, flexible and have some good mobility? Um, is that something that you know? Mm-mm. So how perfect? So talk to me about that because here's the thing: like to me, your stance. Uh, you're like ass to the ground, you know, like you're like legit, like, like down there. And, and yeah. one of the guys that like, you know, your, your, your chest protectors, like, you know, inches from the ground, like you don't have to like dip your thumb a ton on yeah. the low pitch because you're able to keep that like almost like three o'clock position low. Okay. So yeah. talk to me about that. I, I just, I, it was something I had to work at like the flexibility thing. Like when I got to pro ball, I wasn't as flexible. So I was like, man, I really got to be flexible to be back here. And this is when the teeny stance, you know, or the traditional stance was the Mm -hmm. thing. So I was already kind of transitioning into being like flexible, getting more flexible. Um, So that kind of helped when it did come to the, to the one knee down stance. Um, I got introduced the one knee down stance by uh, Alex Berg, uh, who's the catching coordinator for the giants he mm-hmm. was kind of like, man, like, you need to watch Yachty. Like, Yachty does it, and Yachty kind of just, like, falls over the ball when he goes to block, or, like, he'll receive something on a knee. And so, like, we kind of, like, would look at him and be like, man, that's, like, this might be the new thing. Um, and then, of course, like, came Bobby Wilson. You know, working with him was amazing. Like, the dude is is, is a wizard with that stuff. But I got introduced um, by Alex Berg, and, like, Berg and Bobby, they were all kind of like meshing together and like, yeah, I think this is something we'd want to do. And then COVID hit. So uh, once COVID hit after that, it was kind of like, Hey, like, did you, did you work on this thing? Like what? And I was like, yeah, like, let's do it. Like I'm, I'm in. So the spring training games uh, in 21, cause I did it a little bit in 2020, like a tad, like I, I just wasn't that good at it. Like I didn't, there's a lot of things I didn't know how to do or what to do. And so uh, 21 came around and I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in, let's, let's do it. Uh, I'm, I'm all in. Like, as long as y'all say like, you know, it's not going to hurt my, like my chances of, you know, being valuable on the field. And they were like, no, go ahead. Like, try it, go do it. And sure enough, like I did it, man. And I loved it. Like, they gave me like all the freedom in the world to do it that year. And, and, and it, you know, making those little adjustments with Bobby, uh, really helped a lot. Bobby's was on the show and he is like incredible. Dude, that yeah, guy was like, and he is. and again, like I have such appreciation for those guys who played and yep. didn't do it that way, but you know, continue to learn yeah, and evolve. Time. He's, big he's time. the man. So yeah. in terms of the flexibility and mobility stuff, you know, what, what kind of stuff are you doing? Is there somebody in particular to work with just with the training no. staff or, no, man. I mean, uh, to be honest, like, I think I owe it to kettlebells. Like, there were some kettlebell movements that I did. Uh, my sister is a certified kettlebell trainer. Okay. So, like, 
during those kind of times, I was always interested because she's like, she's a beast. She, she's a beast at these kettlebells. <laughs> and um, I just kind of told like one of our strength coaches from the Rangers, I was like, hey, man, like I want to kind of pick these up a little bit. He's like, yeah, let's do it. So we would just like do little movements here and there. But like they were like, I don't know if you know, like what Turkish get-ups are. Like Turkish get-ups were like a big thing. Mm-hmm. I was doing these probably like 2000 and like six, 15, 16 forward. Uh, my, my first off season, I kind of started touching them, kind of started doing it. And then I got an interest to it. Uh, the guy that I worked with is kind of like, yeah, Turkish get-ups are probably like really good for you, you know, because you can handle some weight. Um, and the movements have to be clean. So I was like, yeah, like, shoot, let's, let's keep doing them. So over the years, I just kind of did those and would, would do some other kettlebell stuff. And then obviously some stretching, uh, some movement patterns, like animal flow, people call it animal flow, like crawling, all that kind of stuff. Like that stuff helps like in the long run, because you just learn how to move, uh, with your body. But I mean, I, I just kept kind of going on that track where it was like, all right, I, I know I need to like be in this position um for catching so like how can i get stronger in this position it just so happened to be with a kettlebell you know like all the all these kind of things kind of like dip into the into the movement pattern of like strengthening in those positions so like i'm not going to do like a one knee a one leg down like back squat but like front foot elevated squat like getting down and getting up as fast as you can like those things help but like getting in those weird positions and holding those weird positions like really help whenever you're trying to stretch and get flexible. Love that. And that's honestly mm-hmm. great. Cause like there's so many times we watch big leaguers and we're like, well, like, you know, there's some things we can't teach. You know, these guys are super talented and like knowing that you've worked hard to get to where you are uh, is great for all the listeners, you know, young catchers that feel like they, they do have some limitations there. So that's sweet. So talk about your stance a little bit in this regard, because you, you are a little different. A lot of guys are going uh, with the knee tucked in, and then when the runner doesn't go, they'll go kick out. Mm -hmm. And you'll sometimes go the opposite direction. So what is determining, you know, when you do that, why you do that, or anything of that? Um, Delay steals. There's guys that – there's guys around the league. I'm not going to name them. But there's guys (laughs) around the league that cue on guys that already have their leg out and try to bring it back in as the pitch is coming so i I, for me also like it's a comfortable thing for me like to do that because like well people are always like well how are you going to see the runner how are you going to look at him like how are you going to see him running and stuff like you can see him like i promise you you turn your head like this you can see somebody waving at you you're going to see the runner go so like for me that was just like the most the more comfortable thing for me because i felt like it was easier to bring my leg in rather than go out Mm -hmm. so for me, I, I just, you know, it's it's all a, a comfort thing and getting into the positions. Like, if I feel comfortable, like, starting in a sprinter stance and then getting my leg out, that's what I'm going to do, and I need to make it work if I'm going to play at this level. Oh, for sure. And I love it. It's the, the variation that you create is, mm-hmm. is awesome. So, mm-hmm. on the throwing aspect of it, you know, if I go to, to Baseball Savant and I look at the numbers, you know, your velocity is not one of the best, but you mm-hmm. have one of the better exchanges. Um, yep. talk a little bit about your transfer and your exchange. I've actually kind of been like, uh, battling myself a little bit on the teaching of the transfer. I've done it a certain way for a long time and I'm kind of yeah. evolving to something a little different. So I'm interested to hear your thought on the transfer. Yeah. I mean, everybody, everybody's going to have their own thing, you know, mm-hmm. like for me, like you said, like the velocity part, like there's like a give and take with this, with this thing. Like some guys are blessed to have both transfer and let that thing eat, you know what I mean? But some guys just have to be quicker with the transfer. Some guys are slow with the transfer and just have the arm. So, like, if you look at it, like, I feel like there's ways around it, you know? Like, for me, like, if I'm not going to have the velocity where that thing needs to get out and be in a good spot every single time, you know? Um, so, for me, it's like catch the ball as deep as you can. Like, it's, it's, a, it's a feel versus real kind of thing. So, like, I feel like I'm catching the ball off my chest, but I'm not. I'm nowhere near catching the ball off my chest. Like I'm catching it out in front and I'm trying to exchange it out in front of my eyes. I know I'm not doing that either. I know I'm kind of like dipping down and dropping the ball. Like um, there's a lot of people starting to see that where guys are like flicking the ball under their hand, which is like, that's what you do in the game. Like not many people like catch the ball and go in and, 
you know, grab the ball and then throw. Like not many people do that. It's like a true exchange of like what we talked about, like being an athlete on the field, like an infielder, like a double play. So for me, like if I were to work exchanges, like it's like, let's see how deep I can catch it off my chest and exchange like right in front of my eyes, get a little bit out in front, exchange right in front of my eyes. And then like, for me, there's certain, I I feel like there's certain areas to where if I'm going to transfer the ball, like if I'm going to first base, I want to let it travel as much as I can because I want the ball to turn me. Like if I'm going to second base, I don't want to catch it too deep because I don't want to be stuck behind. So like I have to find that happy medium. And for me, it's like working all those angles around. Like you're going to be out in front on a couple. You're going to be over here on a couple. You're going to be down on a couple. Like work every single angle so that your body's not unfamiliar with when you get to that position. Like, oh, dang, I'm over here. I never practiced this. How am I going to get there? Or like, oh, man, how am I going to transfer that? Like, do I have to get across my face? Like, oh, it's on my right shoulder. I can let it get deep a little bit. So, like, all these positions that you get into, like, you got to practice them. And, like, whether you touch them, like, once or twice every two weeks, your body's going to get familiar with it and be like, oh, okay, that's how my body has to line up. Sometimes it's like, go be an athlete. Like, go be an infielder. Like, I, I feel like we're infielders too, man. We play in the dirt. Like, hell yeah. You know, we, we have to move our feet. We block baseballs. Like, we get in front of balls, you know? So, like, I just feel like sometimes you just got to be an athlete, but there's, there are things that you can work on to where your body's not so unfamiliar with it when it does happen. And when you're training that transfer, like, because, you know, it's like Jerry Weinstein was doing a presentation. And he was talking about how, like, all the best throwers actually, like, you know, they drop, drop into an open mm-hmm. hand, right? But, mm-hmm. like, it's another one of those, just like you said, I've always taught guys to get the ball, let the ball get deep. And then people argue like, well, it's not, but I'm like, yeah, but that's a, that's a, I need them to not be way the hell out here. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. I, you know, that's all it is. So on the yeah. same thing with the transfer, with the drop, are you, are you practicing it with the palm up or do you practice trying to get the glove turned more? Palm up. I mean, I would say like, for me, like I try to do it as quick as I can without closing my glove. I had a great catching coach for many years. Hector Ortiz would teach us like, Hey, like once that ball hits your glove, boom, get that thing in your hand. Mm -hmm. And he would teach us like, don't go get the ball, like, like exchange it, like hit it and make it go to your hand, you know? And it was one of the best drills that I thought uh, we could have done because like, once I started getting the hold of that, I was like, man, that feels like a transfer at second base. Like that's what infielders do. So like, why not just think of it as an infielder? And like, Hector was the best at this thing. He's the man. And the ball would be coming out of the machine and he would just pop up. And you're like, damn, heck, how'd you do that so quick, bro? And, you know, he's got some years on him. So he, uh, he, was, um, he would teach us like that. So, like, for me, it's like a cross and get that ball, like, to pop in my hand. And it's like uh, another, like, battle with, like, the right hand where it's like, you know, I don't want guys to go to the ball with the glove. But, like, we also can't be like, you know, because as you kind of, like, get that little bit of cheat, you know, yeah. your, your right hand will kind of creep away and you create a little too much space. So there's kind of that gray area in the middle of like, don't go get it. But like, we kind of got to go get it in the middle yeah. of our body, right? Like, I, I like to keep my hand kind of like on this right side of my body. Uh-huh. No matter where the pitch is, like, I know that my glove's going to go to my right hand. You know, like wherever I catch it, like I know that wherever it's at, I can go to my right hand. And that's how kind of like I would train it. And, like, for me, like, I remember for a really long time when I would throw, like, when I would see the runner go, my hand would creep up to my chest. And I'd be like, okay, I just got to get to my chest. So that that might be something that will help, too. That's yeah, something that has sure. helped me in the past. But, like, I want to have an idea of where my right hand is. So uh, on the other piece, when you get the ball into your hand, the other thing that I, I found really important is that some kids, players will get that ball in their hand very quick, but their hands kind of stay together. Um, yeah. And something like an old infield instructor that we used to have here that I used to see would always like reinforce separation. Yeah. Um, are you, are you focusing separation in that as well? Yeah. Like try to get, I mean, just get the ball out. Like one of, one of Bobby Wilson's key things was like ball in hand, ball in the air. Like you get that ball in your glove, you get that ball in your hand, get that ball in the air, like get that foot down, get the ball in the air. Like that's one of the biggest things. So like, I don't know if that's maybe why, like, a a better transfer or what it is, but like ball in hand, ball in the air, like get it out, get it out and put it in a good spot. 
I love it. Yeah. And then in terms of your footwork, uh, mm-hmm. you know, again, I, I find that like once the hands kind of figure themselves out, guys are able to, to be on time and kind of figure their feet out as well. Is there anything in particular with your feet uh, that you're thinking about? No, like be an athlete and like let your body work for you. Like for the most part, like you know what your body has to do to line up to make a good throw. Um, some people land close, some people land open, like that's your preference. But like for for a while, I, I mean, it was just like be an athlete, like let's get the throw out. You know, you watch all these cool guys that throw people out like all the time. It's pretty sick. But, like, they're just being athletes. Like, JT. JT does crazy stuff back there. Like, crazy cool stuff, man. Dude's super athletic. And, like, he just, like, bam, bam, the ball's out. You know, he'll do his body turn, ball's out. Like, it's incredible what he does back there. But, like, just be an athlete and, like, get that thing going. For for a while, though, I would see, like, guys' guys' hands would lag because their feet would be so quick. So they would like turn their feet and catch the ball, but they're, they'd be ready to throw, but the ball would be barely coming in their hands. So like mm-hmm. once I, I think that's for younger kids, but like, as you get older and you start like maturing and being like, okay, like I'm starting to sync up, boom, I'm starting to sync up. Cause usually like your body's going to go first, your hands are going to be late. I feel like whenever you transfer, it's never like this. It's always like, oh dang, like I'm either bobbling that thing. That thing's not right in my hand. Like, you know, that's kind of how it is. So, uh, but once you, you know, practice it enough, get it out, do that, like those kind of mistakes are going to happen though, you know, but you train for those things. For sure. For sure. Let's shift to receiving. And obviously, you know, in, in 2022, like an incredible year on the receiving side of things and uh, really good at the bottom of the zone, also side to side, but talk a little bit about uh, really dominating the bottom of the zone. We know that's the toughest place for us. You know, anything moving down, sinking down, breaking pitches. What are you trying to do on that pitch at the bottom? Um, for me, just try to stay below it as long as possible, man. Like, create good angles with your body, create good angles with your glove, um, and get that thing in front of the umpire's eyes as fast as you can. Like, I've always said, I don't want them to see where I catch it. I want them to see where I stop it. Um, so like get under that thing, know the pitch profile and, and rip that thing, dude, like have a ball with it. And I I think like some people get like crazy about it and, you know, they're just like putting stuff all over the place. But like, I think there's like an art to this thing, man. Like you look around the league and so many guys are doing it now and it's, it's awesome to see, like, it's really cool. Like, I, I don't like I have an appreciation for the catching position, like nobody. Else. I can tell you that. Right now. Like I enjoy watching other guys do their work. I enjoy and like I enjoy watching guys like do their pregame work. I enjoy watching guys like do their work on the field. I enjoy watching guys' routines. Like that stuff, like is cool because I'm like, oh man, that's how he does it. Like you never know, it might help me. Like keep my eyes on that guy, you know. So, um, but like. I think there's ways to not perfect it and not master it, dude, because this game is so hard. Like, you're not going to do that. But, like, there are ways to make it look, you know, like like a painting, like an art. Like, the, like I, I feel like there's nothing besides barreling up a baseball. Like, there's nothing like catching a ball at the bottom of the zone when it really counts and it gets called a strike and everybody in the world knows it's a ball, but the umpire doesn't know it's a ball and it's a strike, man. It changes the whole game. Like I, I tell people all the time, I'm like, I have the chance to have an impact on this game. Like every single time I step out there, you know, and I just feel like the importance of receiving a baseball is like, it's, it's valued now, but like, I feel like there's so much more behind it. You're firing me fucking up, dude, right? <laughs> like, serious. I, it's so funny because, like, and here's the reason that, that I didn't play very far is because you said it right where you said there's nothing like it except barreling a baseball. I was yeah. like, I liked it more than barreling a baseball. And probably <laughs> if I paid a little more attention to barreling a baseball, I might have played a little bit longer. Yeah. But it is the idea of, like, you saying that. It's like, dude, like, I was the kid that, like, when kids were like, oh, let's go hit. I was like, dude, I just wanted to play catch. Like, I wanted to hear the glove yeah. pop. And yeah. I wanted to feel the ball spin off my fingertips. Like I, yeah. that was like, to me was like incredible. So like yeah. your appreciation for that is, is so awesome. And 
talk to me a little bit when you say like talking about being patient at the bottom, Mm -hmm. what are some drills you're doing to work on that? And that's, that's obviously a a massive piece because we just feel more comfortable in the center of our body. And we got to just kind of feel a little exposed with that glove being at the bottom. Right. So, so what's crazy is I saw something about Marcelo Zuna the other day, something about how they were facing like a guy that was throwing like a hundred something, right? Like somebody that was nasty. So, So check. So he said like, yo, I need the machine more back so I can have more time. So like for me, like one of the biggest things when I first started doing the knee down stuff was I needed to have more time. So like I would scoot the machine like as far back as it could and I would put it on slow, slow breaking balls. Like like where the ball would come out and it would like stop at the top and it would just like, where it would like land like at the tip of the plate and I would just see it come out of the machine and I'd be like, okay, go. And I'd have to go get it. Like that, that drill helped me a ton. And as I got better at it, you know, obviously picking up the speed of the pitch to where now it's not a breaking ball anymore. It's a fastball. You know, um, I have a number of guys that come and work out with me in the off season just because they're curious, like, Hey, I want to know some things. And I'm dude, I'm like, if you're going to book a flight and you're going to book a hotel room, like you can come and hang out anytime you want and watch catch and drills or do the catch and drills with me. I don't care. Like I have no problem with it. It could be anybody, you know? Um, but like one of the biggest things is like, we're trying to be more patient at the bottom because like, as soon as you go up a, a tick, the velocity of that baseball will take over. And I don't care how strong you are. It's not going to be as, you know, fluid as one move as we talk about. Um, but one of the biggest things is like, having a floating ball, like, boom, like, get it, like, as slow as you can, because as soon as, like, if you look at, like, guys on the machine, like, any, it could be anybody, like, sometimes if it's hard velo, their first move is, like, oh, man, I got to catch this before it's going to hit me in the face, Mm -hmm. like, so their glove comes up, the ball ends up a little bit below, they catch it, and they bring it up, and it's, like, two or three moves, you know, Uh, but for me, it's, like, I want that pitch as slow as I can, to catch and then as you get better like velocity like see how patient you can be with velocity so yeah oh yeah i love it so you Mm -hmm. said something earlier about uh getting yourself angled a little bit obviously we we talk a lot about the glove angles i'm trying to do a little more with body angles talk a little bit about the angle of your setups and your body that you're talking about there yeah so um i actually created this mat we were actually at the abca with it um and it's coming out in march to where it has like you know, arrows to show like where your body angle should be like pointing. Um, and, and for me, like what I've gotten through, like the whole few years that I'm doing this, like the more my arm is away from my body, the more like weak I am, I'm going to be, it's, it's simple. Like if your arms away from your body, you can move. If it's close to your body, it's tougher to move. So like, as I'm going to catch these baseballs, like I want to have a good body angle. I want to have my body like, like everything that I work for in the off season, you know, strength. I want to be behind this baseball. So for me, if I can get away from my arm acting independently by itself and have my whole body behind it, like I'm going to do that, you know, but what people don't understand is like, you can do the angles, you can do all that all you want, but like you have to get yourself in those angles like just what we talked about with the transfers, like you have to practice the transfers. You have to practice like giving the sign and like getting your body in that angle because you're not going to get in the same angle every single time. So for me, like every rep I do, whether it's blocking, receiving, transfers, throws, anything catching related, anything at all, anything, I'm practicing giving a sign. I'm practicing giving this. I'm practicing doing that because it's basically going in my brain as like, like a hard, like a hard drive being like, okay, we've been in this angle before. Okay. Maybe I need to like press forward more. Maybe I need a little bit more extension. Maybe I need to, you know, stay behind the ball, stay down. Like there's all these little things that kind of go into it to where it matters that you start from the start. Like don't skip that. Like you can receive all day on your knee, but like, how are you going to get to those positions? Like, I feel like that's very undervalued in, in the knee down stuff. Because, like, you could catch on a knee, catch on a knee, velocity 100, breaking balls nasty, like, all this stuff. And then all of a sudden you get in a game and you're like, oh, 
oh man, like I got to move my hips like this. I got to get, I got to do that. Okay. Now I'm in position. Oh, the ball's already here. So like, for me, it's very important. Like myself and the guys that I work with, it's like, Hey, like, I'm sorry, but I'm not going to let you just receive on your knee. Like you go from a side given stance. Like, I'm sorry. That's, that's like rule number one. Like can't, I need you to like, if you're going to do this, like you need to find some type of rhythm with it, some kind of dance, uh, something, because it's very important. Like, I, I just think that if you just sit there and you're going to do great, like you're going to sit there, it's going to be there every single time. But like repeating that and being like, all right, I need to, I need, I need to get my body in this position. I need to get my body in this angle. I need to get my body in this angle. And I know I'm not going to get there every single time. So I need to practice the ones that aren't so perfect, you know, be good at those. I love that because I, I was fortunate in college. My catching coach was Tony Arnrich, who's the, the bullpen coach for the Mariners now. And it's like we always had to give sign and go. And mm-hmm. we always implemented that. And it wasn't something we were like big on like having to do all the time until we started doing the one knee down. And I was like, all right, let's transition from signal to the stance. And it's a whole nother ball of wax. Like, it's, you know, it's like, I can't just like drop my left knee down. Then I'm oh, like man. wide open or like whatever. Dude. Right. Like we got to yeah. figure out like, step a little bit at a 45 on this one, or now I called the breaking ball. Maybe I need a little bit more angle. Um, so I love that you said that. Cause that is a, a big part of it. And a big understanding of that is important. I, so I, I naturally did that. Like I didn't realize I, I was doing it until one day I was in camp and one of the coaches was like, those little details matter. And I'm just like, what's this guy talking about? <laughs> he's like, those little details matter. Did you see the way he would receive the ball? He'd go from a sign given stance. And I was like, man, I guess I would like, you know, it wasn't intentional, but then I started paying more attention. I was like, shoot, man, like that has helped me a ton. You know, that's helped me big time, big time. For sure. And you, and you see hitting coaches that are like, all right, take a deep breath. Let's step out, get in, you know, like create a little bit of that rhythm and feel there too. We just sit there and just start raking the same pitch over and over again. Like, yeah, it's not really yep. getting any game like situation. Right. Yeah. Yeah, no. for sure. So, uh, again, when we kind of go back to your stance and how low you are, um, obviously from a blocking perspective, and this is what I love. And actually it was Tanner Swanson when he was on here, uh, talked He's about this too. He is the man, uh, about just like when, when we talk about the blocking position, just like, the height of your chest protector, like doesn't really matter what the rest of your body is. We just got to get that chest protector in a spot. And he was even talking about Higashioka and yeah. how he doesn't even go to his knees, but he's like, but his chest protector is like, you know, four inches from the ground. So it doesn't yep. really matter. Right. Yeah. So same thing I see with you where like your upper body remains like super unchanged because you're already down there. Mm-hmm. But the thing that you would do really well that I love is, is it, everything is super soft. So talk a little bit about A, getting into the blocking position, but B, how do you, how do you keep it soft? Well, let's go before A. I suck at blocking. <laughs> like Really? Dude. Oh, dude. Oh, my God. I had to block with ten- tennis balls my first, uh, my first offseason. Damn, uh, dude. My first offseason going in, like transitioning into catcher, I blocked with tennis balls because wow. I, just, I just couldn't, I couldn't get it. Like, I couldn't figure it out. I couldn't get my body in a good position. Like, my arms would get beat up. Like, my biceps, my wrists would get beat up. Like, my hands. Like, I just couldn't get, like, the repetition of being like, all right, get my glove there, get my glove down, use my chest protect. Oh, I'd flinch, and bam, I'd get smoked and be like, dang, that hurt. Here we go again. Dude, like, I'm telling you, like, it, it like, it was a tough, it, it was tough. Um, but, like, like anything else I've done, like through my career, like I just repped it out, dude. Like I remember, I remember this clear as day. I would be in my my batting cage. I built a batting cage my first off season. As soon as I got my signing bonus, dude, I was like, boom! I'm building a batting cage. I'm getting a pitching machine. The only thing I regret, and I say this till this day, dude, is that I didn't get an automatic feeder. Because if I would have got an automatic feeder, that would have been yeah. amazing. But All I did. I, I, I didn't get it, so I, I I messed that up. But so now your wife I, has to go out there and feed you. Yeah, dude. My <laughs> mom, my mom, dude. I would give lessons. I would be giving lessons, and like I would tell the kid, like, hey, like I'm gonna work in with you today because you know, like I want to show you an example or whatever. 
but really, I'd be I'd be there working, and I'd be like, "Hey, we're gonna work on blocking today because you need to block better." It was me that needed to block better, not him. He was great. I sucked at it. I uh, love it. So, dude, I I still remember clear as day, dude. I I would set up the iPad, um, and I would set it up on the side of me like this, right? So I'd set up like this, and I'd have them feed a ball, and I'd be like, "Where?" Where is that chest angle that I need for the ball to go directly down and stop? Like, where is that chest angle at? Dude, I remember just repping that out and being like, okay, that's the chest angle. And the ball would come out, and I would sit in that angle, and I would just, boom, I'd get hit. And boom, I'd get hit. Um, and as, dude, as soon as I went to a knee, it just changed for me, dude. Like, yep. obviously being on two feet is harder just because, like, you're like hopping and moving and like, you know, hockey goalie, that crap. Like, it's just hard, dude. It was just so hard. Like thinking about sure. it now, it's like, man, that's tough to do. Um, but, but as soon as I went to a knee, I still wasn't as good. Like I still struggled with it because I had to, I couldn't find my body angles to like dent in that baseball. And now like, I, I feel I'm very confident. Like, so I'll tell you something. Nobody remembers this. 22 my first block attempt of the year i missed i whiffed <laughs> on sunday on sunday night baseball jordan montgomery oh. curveball in front of everybody <laughs> i missed i missed it bro. i missed it like i just like so nobody remembers that like nobody mm -hmm. nobody nobody remembers that all they see is like the platinum glove gold glove like that's all they yep. see yep. but like for me that was important Cause it was like, man, I can't believe I missed that block. You know what I mean? Like I block all these baseballs, you know, and, and getting over that hump of like, I've practiced this before. Like you miss a block. Yeah. So what? All right, let's go. Let's get another one. Like that's, I feel like that's where I'm at in my career where it's like, man, I missed that one block, but like I blocked thousands of baseballs. Like, so I know I'm going to get the next one. You know what I mean? Like the odds are in my favor. Like we're good. You know what I mean? Um, But like finding that, that angle, but just like anything, like, sign giving like practice giving that sign getting in a stance that works for you not just for me like not what i do but like what whatever makes you feel comfortable whatever you think you're going to be successful um i was actually i was working with alex berg the other day in dallas uh when i was at the abca and dude still till this day like i'm trying to block like i'm i'm, I'm gonna do it but like a lefty breaking ball left knee down like I could square it up and I block it, but like I don't block it the way I want to block it. So like I'm still working on that. What's the, like, what's the issue when you, when you when you get to it, I, dude? I, I think I just I, I'm just too angled. Like I hover, I get over it, and I, I have a good angle to it. it. I block it, but it goes a little too far for me. Like I don't want no, it you to got go a higher that far. standard. I get it. I get so, it. Yeah. So so like it would be different if I had trouble blocking like right me down. You know what I mean? But I. I I'm fairly okay at it. So like, I, I don't have to quite like do that. You know what I mean? Like I can afford to be just right knee down, but like, just in case, you know, I, I want it just in case, like if I do want to do it, I, I have a feeling I'm going to, I'm going to bring it out one day. Like I'll bring it out one day and just do it. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, man, it's just like anything, like just rep it out. Like this whole week. I mean, I've blocked this whole week. What's today? Thursday. I've, we've blocked this whole week. At the guys that are there with me at, uh, here working out with me like we blocked all week and they know that like I, I told somebody this the other day they were freaked out they were like blocking's your favorite I'm like yeah dude like blocking is my favorite like I love like besides like ripping a strike barreling up a baseball like a good clean like block is like one of the best things that I feel like like it's just well, and, and people appreciate it this is why I tell the younger guys I'm like if you get good at blocking like we do so much in this game that is unappreciated. People don't know when you received really well. People, they, you know, you called a no hitter and who gets all the credit, the freaking pitcher, right? Like all this stuff you don't get credit for. But when you block that ball with a guy on third, the whole place is like, let's go, you know? Yeah. And I'm yeah. like, that feeling is like unbelievable. You know, just not like, I, yeah. you know, I was telling you guys, you hit a home run, right? You saved it. You saved a run. So you basically hit a home run when you do that kind of stuff. Yeah. So I, I, I have a funny story. I had a kid, uh, I said kid, he's, he's playing pro ball right now. I'll save, I'm going to save his name. 
I'm going to save his name, and maybe when he sees this, he can chime in on it. Uh, but he came to me last year, and he was like, hey, bro, I want to know everything you do. And I'm like, all right, come on. Like, let's do it. I want to say it's like December, November. No, it's December. It's December. And his first day of blocking, it is not my first day of blocking. Like, I've been blocking. You know, I've been going at it a little bit. And we're doing righty sliders out of the mini hack attack. So, like, I don't know if anybody knows how hard that is. You, if It might be easy for you, but it's not easy for a lot of people. Whatever. So be it. And I'm like, bro, are you, are you, are you sure? Like, like I love, like I love to block, you know, like I'm, I'm going like, it's, it, this is going to be tough. He's like, yeah, whatever. Like, yeah, we're good. We're good. We're good. All right. So we start blocking and I'm like, oh man, he's getting smoked right now. Like he's getting, like he's, he's getting his chest protector, but I can see that it's, it's like, it's like hitting him and he's like, Ooh, like it ain't, he's not like compressing with it. He's not like filling it out, like being like loose with it like it's not dropping straight to the ground he's like he said he said this today so i can say it he's like bro i was bunning with my chest like <laughs> with my with my stomach <laughs> so fast forward a couple days i'm like hey bro like i should have been like hey bro how you feeling like after the first couple days like is there anything you want to hit on this upcoming week and he's like bro i don't know if i can block today and he sends me a picture of his stomach Oof. dude it's like purple and like oh green and, and black and blue it's disgusting it's gross I, he has the picture he'll probably send it i'll let him, i'll let him chi- i'll let him chime in if he sees this but like i told him i'm like bro i'm so sorry but like this is like this is what i love to do and like i feel like if i train harder than in practice than what a game is like the game becomes a little bit easier you know what i mean For so sure. dude now fast forward a year this kid is like lead the charge, man. He's like, like today I had a, I had another buddy come in and I was like, watch, I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask him what he wants to do today. He's going to say blocking. Sure enough. It's, it's like 30 degrees in our facility. It's really cold. And I said, Hey bro, what do you want to do today? And I said, watch this. And he goes, I want to block, bro. Let's go. Sure <laughs> enough. Like, let's go. Let's block. So like, I, I think it's just something that, that, like goes unappreciated a lot but like i love to do it man i love the block like it's one of my favorite things to do like if i could do that i i, I mean i do it every day so like it's it's fun for me you know the one knee adds to you being able to do it every day though too like that yeah, was one thing sure. like craig craig albert sure. was on and he's like the best mm-hmm. part about blocking a knee is like dude we can do it every day he goes we mm-hmm. used to have to be like hey guys thursday blocking get ready you know like it's prep your bodies like yeah. stretch your legs like dude I, I dude i still remember those days i don't know how like i'm so thankful for like bobby and tanner and bergy like i'm so thankful for those guys because like like i i tell bobby thank you all the time dude i tell tanner thank you all the time i tell i tell bergy thank you all the time dude because like it changed my career dude like it really did and like without those guys even like mentioning it and being like you know making these little adjustments like be like hey why don't you try this instead of this where you know like it's crazy dude like you can you can go online like all the time and see people just bashing it and you're like dude but it works for me like it's what works it helps me it helps my team it helps my pitchers like it gives me a living like i and 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 i'm i'm trying to get better at it as i keep going like what what's so hard to think about that you know and like i don't want to say like the traditional stance is like how or like you're doing it wrong but like dude if that's what you want to do go for it if that's what you think is right like go for it but like this is what works out dude this is what works for me it's fucking out this is what works (laughs) this is this is what works for me dude because like i dude i I just tell that i just like thank bobby and and berg and and, and tanner all the time dude because like like i don't know bro I don't know. Yeah. No, the and like, uh, just... I mean, those those guys are top notch. But again, you said it perfectly earlier when you said you sucked at blocking and the minute you got into a knee down it became way easier. And that's the problem with all the all the all the crap that people talk about is like yeah. they're always like, Oh fine, you receive better, but like what about block? It's like, no, dude, like you don't get it. Like guys block better too. Like yeah, guys we're block already better. down there. It's it's, it's we crazy. Can identify like, longer. The the 
the standard for everything is going up, like in the league. For for stealing strikes, it's going up. For blocking, it's going up. For throwing, it's going up. You know, everybody's starting to push that envelope where it's like, man, everybody's doing this thing and it's starting to be real cool, man. And, and like, I, I go back to the blocking stuff. Like, you talk about my chest and my angle and all that stuff. Like, people always ask me, like, oh, well, like, what do you think of your chest? I'm like, dude, I'm not thinking of my chest angle anymore. Like, I'm past that. I know my chest angle is going to be there. And, like, I know my chest protector is going to be, like, you know, I wish I can go get my chest protector for you so I could show you. But, like, <laughs> I know where my target is, where my bullseye is. Like, I want it right here on my belly button. You know, I don't want it here. I don't want it there. Like, I want it right here on my belly button. That's the way it's controlled. And I know exactly where it's hitting. Now, after that, it's about getting to those positions in my shin guards. Like, using my shin guards to slide to get in, like, shoot at that 45-degree angle, whether it's left or right, knowing how the ball's bouncing off the ground, um, knowing if a guy has, like, a high spin, like, curveball, knowing if a guy has, like, a high spin slider where it's going to cut on the ground or it's going to skip and back, uh, the change-up, like, is it a high spin change-up? Is it a split change-up? Like, all those things come into play, and it's like, I don't think about my chest protector anymore because, like, I know where I want the ball to hit. It's just, like, aiming practice, like, I like I just I, I'm just basically moving on my knees and pushing off my toes and being like oh yeah all right that's where I need to be boom block you know what I mean so there's a lot of stuff that like I do that goes into it like technical stuff that happens pretty quick but like I dude I've been doing it for a long time like I, I say I've been doing it for a long time dude I've only been doing it for like three or four years now but like it's felt like forever because of just like how many reps like. I do, man. Like, I, I just try to, like, I'm, I'm shooting for the master of it, like, to master it. I know I'm not going to do that, but, like, I want to get as close as I freaking can to that, dude. Like, I I, will, I I think it's a compliment when, you know, like, guys are asking to come hang out with me in the offseason because they want to know. Like, that's a huge compliment. And, like, not only a compliment to me, but, like, a compliment to the guys that taught me what I'm doing, dude. Like, mm -hmm. these guys helped me, like, change my career. Like, big time. Big time. I love it. I love it. And you answered – you just answered my question from earlier where I said, how do you keep the ball so soft? And this is what I tell guys is we got to be accurate. Like, it's got to hit in the soft dude. spot, right? And and so many times there's, like, guys are trying to figure out how to have, like, this. Like, I just got to get it here. It's like that's not the case. I got to get a little bit right to the middle of that thing so it hits softer. Yeah. I, I, I think that, like – I think there's something to it, man. Like the breathing part, the breathing aspect of it. As I got better with, with, with my breathing, uh, Hector Ortiz was the one that kind of taught me like, Hey, like as the ball hits you, like exhale, bro, like let that thing out, you know, like push it out. And like that, that helped me a lot too. When I first started doing it, I first started getting kind of like the hang of it. So like, I, I just, there's a, there's a lot of people to credit dude and they know who they are. Like there's people that have told me like, from Chris Briones to like, you know, Tanner Swanson, like everybody in between now has been like such a help, dude. Like such a big help because I like, I might not have taken everything they've told me and, and stored it. I might've taken that one or two piece that has helped me still till this day, dude. Like mm -hmm. that's just how baseball is. I feel like, and like, if you want to listen to somebody holy, like, and be like, yeah, that's like who I listen to, like go for it. But like, for me, it's like, taking those little bits and pieces and having those guys like it's like a it's like a picture dude like a huge picture and then as you zoom out you see all these pieces are connected and it's just like of all the people that have like taught you something and it's like made this like one picture like that's what like when i when i look at my 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 gold glove and my platinum glove from the from the big leagues like i see it as like so many people like can be proud of this thing because like they helped me with it dude like I'm not going to sit here and be like, yeah, I did it all. I figured it all out. Like, no, I did it. I did it, dude. There were, there was times where I didn't think I was going to, you know, figure it out, but it was just like, Hey, keep going. Like, how about this? Let's try this. Let's try this glove load. Let's try doing this instead of this, dude. I'm telling you, like we, we dig in on this stuff and it's, it's, it's fun, dude. Like it's, it's fun. And like, I enjoy it because I just enjoy the game that much, dude. Like I just love the art. I just love the art of catching and like 
I know you're, you're probably going to ask about AVS. Like, I think it's BS because like, <laughs> dude, like you take away like the art of all this stuff that guys do, man. And like the work that guys put in, like, dude, everybody across the league is, is so talented and, and they're very like, like their skill sets are all like great dude. And like, everybody does like that one thing that's so good. And you're like, man, that's legit. Like, that's pretty good. You know what I mean? Like you can go up and down the list. You give me a guy, I'll be like, I'll give you one thing about him. This, mm -hmm. this, like I, I can do that because like, I just like watching what everybody's doing, man. And, and, and the fact that we have something to measure, like, you know, how to compete and stuff like on the catching side, like that stuff's cool, dude. Like, I think that's, I think that's great. So. For yeah, sure. And I think that the best part about, you know, that you're talking about with your coaches too, is that, that they're eager to keep learning with you. And I think oh, that was dude. like, that's, I mean, we know like Tanner obviously was like a pioneer yeah. in the whole right knee down yep. or the knee down situation. But like, yep. even when I had Bobby on and he was like, the things we wanted to do was I went and I broke down the top five guys at yep. every zone that they it's were, the how they way, received dude. them. Like how, do, and it was like, and so it's not like, dude. here's how we do it. It's like, let's, let's find out how the best guys do it. How and the let's best do, guys do it. How the best guys do it. And what Bobby would do, dude, I don't know if he shared this with you, but I'll share it with you. because Bobby's awesome. Dude. We would like, after, after our games, we would catch that day. He would come and sit with us with the iPad and it would just be like, this pitch, that pitch, this pitch, that it'd be like three or four pitches. It wouldn't be anything like, like 10, 12, 15, 20. It wouldn't be that many pitches. It'd be like, how about we try this with this? How about we try this with this? Dude, this is in the middle of a big league season. We're like, we're just like making adjustments. And like, it went from like making adjustments by game to making adjustments by like pitches to where like I would catch a ball and I'd look at Bobby and he'd be like, stay down, like stay <laughs> down, like dude like it was it was incredible man and like like you said like tanner was like the pioneer of it dude and like just to be able to work with him every day is awesome dude because like i, I love tanner bro i love bobby i love tanner like they've been like a blessing to my career dude like and just being able to be around that kind of knowledge is not only going to help me now but like when i want to go and do whatever i want to do you know after i'm done with my playing career you know i plan on managing dude i want to be a manager. Love I want that. to win World Series as a manager. So, like, that's going to help me, you know, with all that kind of stuff. And it's just – it's been a cool – it's been a fun ride, dude. Like, it's been fun. And, like, I feel like just getting started with this kind of stuff, man, I think there's so much more to it that we're going to be able to unlock. For sure. Uh, dive into the, the, the umpire piece. Obviously, mm -hmm. the – the uh i'm with you on abs i hate that and yeah. i hate the thought of it because i'm just like you i love watching what guys are doing now and yeah so to me again umpires are you got big league umpires are freaking incredible incredible dude, dude. like people, i mean it's people bash it's these dudes people bash <sighs> these dudes and these dudes are freaking good Dude, they're like, like again. We're, the ABS is is a is like a five percent problem that yep. for some reason we're talking about because these guys are literally like ninety five percent right. They're good man, they're good, bro. And, they're they're all good. They're and all of them are like have their little thing. You know what I mean? And like you can tell that they like they're good. They're good. Like yeah, I'm, I, like people probably expect me to say like, oh, they stink. No, dude, they don't. Like they're good. They're good back there. So as the, as the moving the ball has started, you know, everybody talks about, Oh, if I'm an umpire, I see him move the ball, whatever. What, nope. how, what's the conversation Nothing. with that? Nothing. Nothing. Zero. None yeah. of these guys, none of these guys care what you're doing. None of these guys care if you, you do whatever you want to do with your glove. Like I've never gotten a word from anybody, from anybody. Yeah. And like, and like you said, like people all the time, like, Oh, if I hear that, like what people don't know is like, these guys are right over our ear. They're not telling us anything. If anything, they'd be like, Hey, like, where's that? Like, can you go and check that for me? Like, let me know if that was off or not. Mm -hmm. You know, like there are some guys that want to know. And there's some guys that like, oh, I'll just, I'll let you know, like tomorrow, you know what I mean? And you know, what's crazy is like, these guys will come the next day and be like, yo, you were right. Like that was, that was a strike or like, Hey, like I got that wrong. Like, you know, that's on me. Like these guys are good, man. Like they're good at what they do. They really, they really, really are. They're good at what they and do. And they, they know that it's your job to try to fool them. I think that's the other piece is like, they're not like, you know, they're not like sitting here going, make it easy. It's like, no, you're, you're literally, you're trying to win games. Yep. You know, you're trying to make money. 
You know, it's yeah. like it's your job I, I to be say, good at this. I, I wouldn't say to fool them. I don't want to fool them. But like you said, like we're trying to get a competitive advantage. Put it that and, way. <laughs> and honestly, way. in in today's game, I don't even feel like it's that fooling them as much as like, mm-hmm. dude, these guys are throwing so goddamn hard with so much movement <laughs> that it's like it's not easy for them to call strikes that are even in the zone. It's like we're almost just trying to make it easier for them to call strikes strikes and not really worry about catching balls. Yeah, no, man, they're, they're, they're good. Um, I got into it with a guy last year, um, and I, didn't, I haven't gotten to see him yet. I plan on apologizing to him, though, because I, there was a couple, like, that I think it was I – mean, we I was fighting my ass off to get these strikes, man. And I I started complaining and, you know, giving them some lip. And we kind of went back and forth a little bit. And then, like, a couple days later, you know, my season ended. But, I, I like, when I see him, I plan on telling him, like, hey, man, like, you know, last year that was on me, dude. Like, I, I didn't realize it, but those were balls. And, like, you were right. You know, I didn't get to tell him. Yeah. But now, like, I'm, I'm going to tell him. And hopefully, For sure. maybe, maybe he'll see this. Maybe he'll see this. We'll see. <laughs> so how do you – how do you deal with your, your relationships with the umpires? I mean, you obviously see them a lot and you see a lot of the same guys. Is it just the basic, you know, Hey, you have normal conversation or do you talk dude, a lot yeah. about the game and the pitches? Just dude. Like there's so many things that go into the baseball game. Like they're professionals, dude. Like they're yeah. all professionals and they're all like, Hey, like, you know, this is uh, like, you know, this is one of my favorite stadiums. Like, as far as like stuff like that, you know what I mean? Like, Oh, I like, I like, I like being behind the plate here. Or like, I like being on the bases here rather than behind the plate. You know, it's a little darker, like whatever it is, dude, it's yeah. just a Check out the blonde in row three over the dugout. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, no, no. They, I, I will, I will say no, they don't, they're, they're not. Like I'm that. just kidding. About, I'm just it's, kidding. It, it, it's all, it's all about the game. It's all about the game. And they're like, you know, like, um, you know, they, they hear everything, dude. Like, I don't care what anybody says. They hear everything. Oh, everything. for sure. You for know, sure. Like, and that's, that's what again makes them special because they do hear everything and they're, you know, they're like, Oh, that guy's got a short fuse. I'm like, no, he doesn't. He's heard this for an hour and a half. And he finally was like, I'm done with it. You know? Yeah. 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 No, but the, I mean, these guys, are, they're, they're very professional, man. And like, once you get to know these guys, it's like good to work with them because it's like, and like, dude, I've had guys tell me like, Hey, like good block, dude. Like that's a great block. You know, like, Hey, like way to keep that ball in front of you, like stuff like that. Like they'll, they'll, they'll go off on things like that. But like, it's, it's real, it's real professional. Like, you know, like you make a block and like, it's, it, it almost like hit him or whatever. Like it was going to square him up and you block it. And he's like, Oh, thanks, Hosey. I appreciate that one. Like, Ooh, that was <laughs> yeah. a good one. Like a yeah. pick, like a, like a dart, like a long dart into the ground, like a fastball at like a hundred and you like, bang, you pick it. And he's like, Oof. And maybe Hosey like Hell yeah. stuff like that like all the time so it's 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 cool man it's good yeah they get a bad rap it it bugs me but I do man uh on that rule change subject how has the rule change this year or or last year with the uh pitch clock and everything affected controlling it. the run game i love it dude yeah i love it because it's like you said like it's a competitive like i said it's a competitive match thing like not only do you have to have your scouting report like dialed in you can't like shake around the world anymore. Like you got to know what your pitcher's feeling. You got to know what y'all are feeling. You got to know what the hitter's feeling. You got to go. And plus, you got to run on first base. You know, so like, it's 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 something that like you know you had to adapt to. Like you either got with it or you got left behind. And I think that's the way it's going to be with the knee down stuff. But you didn't hear me yeah. say that. No, so. that's that's literally it. It's like dude, like we can't get emotional about shit. Like that's like what works, what works, and the game mm-hmm. is changing and. Yep. It doesn't really matter what we think about it, but yeah. Well, I appreciate yep. you coming on, man. I got my last question I do for uh-huh. everybody. Yeah. Is uh, along your journey of, mm-hmm. of baseball, whether it be, it could be college, it could be minor leagues, you know, in the big leagues. I like you to think of one place to eat that sticks out to you. Oh man. One place to eat. Dude. We were in San Jose, California, and I had never had Black Bear Diner before. No, you're going to drop Black Bear Diner on me? I love it. (laughs) Dude, 
I had never had Black Bear Diner before, and we were playing. Did you get the pancakes? Dude, I get the Dude, pancakes. The sweet cream pancakes. Go oh Dude, my the pancakes god! Were, the pancakes. If you if you never had Black Bear Diner, the pancakes at Black Bear Diner, you will not regret it. I promise you, they're great. They're, they're great. They are great, Elite. and they got like Elite. they got this fresh squeezed orange juice it's so good they got yes. like the machine in front and it's got all these oranges falling down just like punching them dude oh man that place is legit i did so i didn't i didn't know like there was one in arizona so that next spring i ended up i was living by one so i was like i'm gonna be a regular here done i'm gonna be a regular <laughs> there so yeah black bear diner dude black Love bear that. diner good yeah, stuff I, I definitely hit that one up. i'm close enough i'll door dash that one sometimes I'm what is too what has everybody else said has, there, has everybody said like Dude, it's like, it's a whole different gamut. It's like some people will talk like about like, just like a chain or like whatever. And then like a lot of people will be like, no, there's this like hole in the wall at like this place. Like, you know, it's like, you gotta like knock on the back door and like, you know, like stuff like that too. But but I want to like put this like map together of like, you know, here's all the places to eat, you know, that people have like brought up and, and uh, I'm a, I'm a foodie. So, uh, I love it, but it's a good one. Sweet cream pancakes. Yeah, I appreciate you, man. Thank, Thank you so you. much for coming on, man. Like I, I just appreciate know it. how how valuable this information is for a lot of guys that, that listen. Yeah. And I know a lot of guys that I'm working with will definitely take a lot from it. So yeah. also, thank you so I, much. I, I, post, I post a lot of stuff uh, to my like regular Instagram account, but like a different one. I made okay. for, like my, my recovery. It's called Manifesto from a Mask. Okay. I post a lot of like catching stuff on there too. Like not Hell only yeah. was it my recovery stuff, but it was like weightlifting stuff and like hitting and a lot of catching stuff lately. So if you want to go check it out, like there's some stuff on there too. So. I'll check it out and I'll, I'll pump it on my page too to, yeah, to get everybody for following sure, man. For sure. So, sweet, for man. Sure. Thank you so much. All right. Yeah, no doubt. Appreciate See you. Ya. If you enjoyed that, be sure to like and subscribe. We'll have a new episode for you every single Tuesday here on our YouTube channel and wherever you listen to podcasts.